Today we're comparing two great Taylor guitars. The most affordable Taylor option from the US, that is the Taylor AD17 against its closest competitor in the lineup, the 317. Many of you have asked for this comparison, so here you go, check it out. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, buy something and visit our Teespring store link below for our custom designed t-shirts. So, Cooper, we are comparing two extremely popular, really affordable models from Taylor. Now, you have the 317E. And that is one of the first Grand Pacific body shapes that was introduced when Taylor came out with the GP body. Um, and is really a great workhorse guitar and a favorite mm -hmm. among many. I have what is arguably the least expensive American-made Taylor. And I say arguably for this reason. The non-E version of this guitar and the non-E version of the GT, which was recently released, the GT Urban Ash, are the same price. However, if you then want to upgrade from a GT, your next option is an 800 series, okay? But for this, it has a very close competitor in the 317. There's only $400 price difference that separates these, whether it's the non-E or the E version, $400 difference. But the least expensive is going to be the American Dream 17E. And these have been extremely, extremely popular guitars yeah. the 317 is as well and so i thought it was good to kind of talk about the differences and then of course compare them so people can hear for themselves yeah do you have a favorite yourself between these two, between these two. um i'm kind of a sucker for the 300 series and in, in general i really like it because of the kind of spruce i know it's not mahogany sapele but the kind of spruce and mahogany-esque tone, I really dig it. I like the understated look. However, the American Dream has Even a different, but <laughs> you know, very understated look. Um, I'm a big fan of the 314 in, in general. I think that's maybe my ideal tailor, you know, if I was just gonna go, and especially within that price range. Um, I really like the 317, big fan of the Grand Pacific body style as a rounded shoulder dreadnought. Yeah. Really, really beautiful sound. I will have to say, right before we started this video, I pointed at that guitar and I said, cool, Urban Ash, not nope. Urban Ash, um, Oven Call. Yeah, so the GT at this price range is Urban Ash, mm -hmm. but with the American Dream series, the 8017 is Spruce and Oven Call. You can go with the 27, which is Mahogany and uh, Blackwood, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's a little bit different pairing of the wood. And of course, over there, you've got Spruce and Sapele. Let's start, let me talk about what is the same between these guitars, and then I'll point out kind of the key differences and where that $400 difference lies. So they are the same body shape. They have the same bracing, the same scale length, the same nut width, the same hardware, okay? They're both made in the USA. So they're both made in El Cajon, California, in Taylor's facility. Um, and that is pretty much, they have the same pickup, mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it. You know, that's, that's the things that are the same. Here are the differences. The tops could be different. The American Dream could be Sitka Spruce or Lutz Spruce. This looks like Sitka, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, the back and sides are different, as you just pointed out. So that is Sapele. This is Ovencall. And Ovencall has been in Taylor's lineup for years. It's been used on the 400 series for I guess decades at this point, and it, it's actually one of my preferred tone woods. I don't think it gets enough credit. It's an unknown wood, and so it's a more affordable option, but it's actually a really, really great tone wood. Think of Ovencall as rosewood with mid-range. It's got the base of rosewood, it's got the high end of rosewood, it's got overtones, but it doesn't have a scooped mid-range. So it's a broad spectrum uh, tone wood with a good strong mid-range to it, and pairs really, really well in a body like this with spruce top. The other differences, this has a all satin finish, that has a uh, gloss top, satin back and sides. Mm -hmm. The difference between the finishes is different though. I mean, this is like an open pour finish. Mm -hmm. You can hear it. 
That's this is less. Yeah, I'm not doing that on purpose, trying to make it quieter, but totally different. Satin. And you can just look at it and yeah. see, like that smooth on here, you can see the grain of the wood. Yeah. Um, and so that's a distinct difference. This doesn't have binding, whereas that one does. Without binding, they're able to chamfer the edges. And so it has this rounded feel to it, which is a nice aesthetic, um, but it has no binding on the top or the back. It has kind of what I've dubbed is the reverse of reveal binding. It's kind of a paint binding line, which works really well. It has no binding on the neck. So you can see the fret tangs, the sides of the fret that are in the neck. Um, on that one, of course, it's bound, so you cannot see those things. The material used for the bridge and the fingerboard are different. So this is smoked eucalyptus. That's ebony. Playing, I can't really tell the difference. Looking at them, I can't really tell the difference, yeah. but they are different. Um, the neck is probably where I, when playing these two guitars, feel the biggest difference. And I think that one is because of the finish used, and two, I think the wood's different. And I, don't hold me to this, I'm not gonna pull off the specs, but I think this is a Sapele neck, okay. and that's mahogany, Yeah, I think. Um, if it's not, if this is mahogany and that's mahogany, then it's, it's just the difference in the finish that is being used. But this has, overall this guitar has kind of a slightly rougher feel to it and a slightly less refined look to it. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair enough, okay. Um, other than that, you know, like I said, the hardware is the same. Uh, obviously the inlay is different and the cases are different. That is a GP, so it comes with probably Taylor's, one of Taylor's coolest cases, which is this case over my shoulder, which is the Western Floral Grand Pacific case. And so it's a hard shell case that Taylor makes, fits the guitar like a glove and is great. This comes with the Arrow case, which is also a very, very cool case from Taylor. It's kind of a hybrid between a case and a gig bag. The biggest differences between these though, I think come down to this feel and then the sound. So you like the sound of that. You, you liken it to mahogany. Yes, which I like. I mean, my perf my personal acoustic guitar, spruce and mahogany, really like it. Um, just for that mid range push, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy. I think talking about it, listening here, listening to you talk about it, I prefer this type of satin finish mm -hmm. as well. I think that skews my decision. Um, however, something about because obviously Grand Pacific harkens back to a different time of acoustic guitar sound. Uh, it makes me think of Laurel Canyon, you know, kind of yeah. like how you've talked about and you've talked with Andy Powers about. Um, having a finish like that almost signals to me even more so of that, like not boxy, that's not the right tone, but like super resonant, transparent, like. And it's part of that finish. It feels yeah. so thin on that guitar that you've, maybe it's just in your mind tricking you into it, but I feel like, like you can feel at, all the yeah. vibrations everywhere, which is something that I think is pretty desirable about that one. Even more so than that one, I love the black top yes. so much um, in the American Dream series. But they're both, I mean, GP body style without having to go up to a 517 or 717 builder's edition, all that. Um, both really cool. And the black top that you mentioned is effectively this exact same guitar with a satin black finished top and it costs more. Yeah. And so this is the more, this is the most affordable full size. It's fair enough to say full size. The GT is kind of a tweener, yeah. you know, which my 13 year old son keeps telling me is a thing. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> when he was 11. So, uh, yeah, I, it, it's, the GT is a tweener. It's not a travel guitar. It's not really a full size guitar it's kind of approaching full size. This is a full size guitar. So this model without the pickup and without the black top is the most affordable American made Taylor. And it's amazing what you can get right now comparatively. Mm -hmm. uh, we just talked about the differences and there's some aspects to this guitar that I like better than the 317. And it, the, it really comes down to the sound that I get from the Ovum call. So you talked about being a mahogany guy and kind of liking Sapele for that. And I love mahogany. I like Sapele, but I will say Sapele is like mahogany with more treble. You know, yeah. mahogany is this pronounced mid-range and Sapele is like the mid-range comes up and then just stays there and you also have treble to it. That's how I think of Sapele. And it's a great sound. What you'll probably hear in the demonstration between these two is that one's probably going to sound louder because that brightness tends to come out. 
On this one, there's a lot of treble, there's a lot of mid-range, there's a lot of bass, there's those overtones that I like from Rosewood. And so this is like getting a very affordable Rosewood round shoulder dreadnought from Taylor. Yeah. Um, and the, the next closest option to this, price-wise and spec-wise is this. Tonal-wise would be a, a 717. A yeah. Builder's Edition 717E would be the closest tonal-wise guitar to this. Uh, which is over three thousand dollars, yeah, or close to it. Because is that rosewood and spruce? Yeah, it's rosewood and, rosewood spruce. and spruce. Yeah, so yeah, so listen with your ears as much as you also look at your eyes, and keeping in mind there's a four hundred dollar price difference between these two. I want you to check out this demo and see if you can hear those tonal differences for yourself. Check it out.
So there you have it. Hopefully you were able to hear the differences. Now we are holding different guitars. I've got now the 317. You've got the AD17E. Feel-wise, do you, hear, you feel on the neck what I was talking about? Yeah, totally. It's a big difference. Big difference. It's not bad. It's not uncomfortable. But when you compare that one to this one, the smoothness is something that does kind of jump out at you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's not, it's different. It's not better or worse. It's different. You might have said this just a second ago and I'm blanking. Are these the same exact nut width? Same nut width. Same nut width. It's weird how it feels. It just affects everything. Yeah. 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 In interesting. No, but it's, it's cool. Loud. It's louder. Loud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just, it. it's a rougher feel because it's a thinner finish, which is a, yeah. it's, Really, it's kind of a more natural feel yeah. to it. We've seen that in a bunch of other guitars, and there's certainly a return to that. It does make the guitar more resonant. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the biggest things that jumped out at me as soon as I held the two. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is almost like a semi-gloss in comparison. Yeah. So, And yeah. tonally, hopefully everyone could hear the difference. That one doesn't sound, to, me, to my ear, you've heard it, so I'm not trying to color your, your, what you took away, but here's what I hear. That one's not as loud as this one. But that one has more richness to it, particularly in the low end, and those overtones are there, particularly if you start playing some chords. I, I, I played a little bit in Dad Gad, uh, kind of noodling around, and you can really hear with all of those open positions and the resonance, uh, you know, those overtones come out on, on the guitar. So, yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. I like the American Dreams. They're good. I mean, we've liked them since they came out, but... We have, yeah. and you know, we've had a lot of questions about this. We've actually done the series comparison before, but we've had people ask about these specific guitars, and th I thought it was important to kind of put them head-to-head -head and really look at them and compare the sound between these two, because I think there's a lot of people wanting that round shoulder spruce top dreadnought that want that brightness and are, are looking uh, at the price of it. $400 is not insignificant money, but even beyond that, there is a sound difference between these two guitars. And hopefully you were able to hear it on the video and that can help inform your decision. Let us know. So, which one would you go with? Do you have any thoughts? You'd probably go with this one, right? I like the 317. Yeah. What about you? I think I'd go with the, the 8017. I like the overcall. That's so, fair. Yeah, regardless of price. It's really, to me, it's, that's, that's kind of secondary. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. And Again, Chris doesn't, on the record, doesn't have insider knowledge, okay. I guess. But do you imagine <laughs> Sometimes the, I do and don't say. the Grand Pacific uh, being expanded to different numbered lines in, in Taylor's? Yeah, I'm not aware of any particular plans, but I really hope so. Um, you know, the Grand Pacific came out and it was originally the 517, the 717, the 317. We saw that expand to the 327, which have also been incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great addition with that kind of rich mid-range sound of that mahogany top on it. Um, and then the next you know, expansion was the American Dream guitars. I don't think we'll ever see it come out of the line built in Tecate in Mexico yeah. because V-Class bracing is yeah. inherent to the design of the body shape. Um, and I've heard of no plans to expand it down there. Um, but I would love to see a mahogany 500 series Okay, I'd love to see that. We've had some custom ones, like the Walnut one. I've seen that little Catch Thirty Eight. Yeah, that yeah. was a cool guitar. Um, nice. I've seen custom Nine Hundred Series ones. Uh, I've seen custom Koa guitars, wow. but I'd love to see uh, a GP kind of go throughout the line because I think yes, something in the Five Hundred Series with mahogany, um, other than the Five Seventeen, yeah. like a like with a cedar top could be cool. Um, I think the Eight Hundred Series. Yeah, uh, could be really nice to just take it up to the next level. A maple one is what I would probably like to see next because it's the next iteration in Tonewood. Yeah, we've got mahogany, we've got sapele, we've got ovuncol, we've got rosewood, uh, koa and maple. Would, would that would be great? Would a maple be like a six seventeen? It'd be a six seventeen. That'd be pretty cool. It'd be very cool. So, you know, back in the day, uh, I played. I think it was serial number twelve. Maybe been serial number six at the Taylor factory, which was an early Taylor yeah. that Bob built, and it was spruce and maple dreadnought, and it was great. Yeah. So yeah, that's very, be a cool. very very cool guitar. Yeah, I'd like to see some more, some more of the seventeens. That'd yep. be great. Absolutely. You hear that, Taylor? Cooper has spoken. More Grand Pacifics throughout the line for 2021 and 2022. Anyways, we can hope. But hey, 
Let us know what you think. Do you want to see more Granite Pacific bodies throughout the line? Because, you know, I'm not saying Taylor watches this channel, but maybe Taylor watches this channel. <laughs> you can let them know what you think. If you're new to the channel, by the way, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Ring Cooper's bell over there. Uh, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and comment below. Uh, remember, at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing, whether it's $400 more or less expensive. So keep playing, keep coming back, and we'll see you next time.